Hey, Virtual Bell. Hello, Virtual Chua. You're, uh, you're, you're very far away from me Yeah, now. it feels weird. You're so small on the screen. This is the first time we're attempting to podcast from a distance. Even though we only live like 10 miles apart because of London, it takes bloody ages yeah. to get from one place to another. And I don't have any air conditioning in my car at the moment, so I just cannot be bothered to go down to your house. <laughs> And so. also, like, realistically, we're both still full-time working wedding photographers, which, if anything, should be, I think that should be, like, a plus point to us, you know. Like, if, you, if you're going to take any wedding business advice, it's better it comes from, like, a, an actual wedding photographer, right? Yeah. If we can <laughs> make this a little bit more time efficient, this would be great. Because right now, I don't know about you, but I am in, like, the, the, the throes of wedding season. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is full on. I did take an afternoon off yesterday, which I'm very proud of myself. Oh, what did you do? We went to a garden. We went to we went and joined the Royal Horticultural Society, and then we went to one of their show gardens, which is one of the lamest old person thing. I think I'm old, <laughs> to be honest. So we were the youngest people there by a long shot. Because who goes who goes to an RHS garden on a Monday afternoon? Yeah, to be fair, everyone else is either at work. At least if you've gone on the weekend, you might have caught some like new wave hipster. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they were going to totally go back. They had a really great nursery and they had pancakes. So what better way to have a day off? Anyways, yeah, not related to the topic. That's cool. I think, I think we're allowed to do preamble. Yeah, why not? So we're going to talk about blogs today, which is an important part of my business. And mine. And it's an important part of weddings in general. It's like, it's kind of replaced the wedding magazine. Yeah. It's a modern era now. People need to, to catch up and online yeah. is becoming as important as in print. So the same goes yeah. for the wedding industry. I know I got married. Um, God, when did I get married? I should know this. 2009. And even in 2009, I didn't buy a single wedding magazine. Oh, really? I always thought I would. Yeah, I always thought I would buy like a whole stack as soon as I got engaged. But I even in 2009, I was going straight for the wedding blogs. Oh, okay. Pinterest didn't exist. Yeah, but I was still going straight to the wedding blogs and then like saving little links to everything I liked. I kind of want to ask this like now, but I know it's more relevant for later, but like the wedding blogs that are around at the time, are they the same ones that are around now? The only one that I had managed to discover back in 2009 when I got married was Style Me Pretty. Oh, okay. And there was a wedding on Style Me Pretty that I loved so much that I actually went and tracked down the wedding dress manufacturer and tried on that wedding dress and like based a bunch of the things around. It, I didn't, it wasn't like a straight copy, but I loved her dress and I loved the groom style. And I just really, I kept going back to that wedding blog feature and be, kind of like pulling ideas from it. Isn't that so, exactly what we want as wedding suppliers now? We want to know yeah. that people will do that. They'll look at the wedding blogs and look for those yeah. wedding suppliers. I drove, so I lived, this is when I lived in the States. And then closest uh, supplier that had those wedding dresses was four hours away. Uh, and so okay, I wow. drove four hours to go try on this wedding dress. Mm. And so I didn't end up buying that particular dress because it was a bit too boobsy on me. Like it was really low cut and like my boobs were just like all out there. Um, and so I ended up buying a dress from the same manufacturer just based on like it was a similar idea, but the the, the, the neckline was a bit different. Oh, OK. But that was all based on a wedding blog. Yeah. So. So the magic yeah. works. You are, you are living proof. It totally proof. works. I am living proof. Ah, oh, brilliant. My okay. wedding photos are living proof. I think like the reason why we thought about doing this topic, um, as well as both of us actually using it a lot in our own business, we'd kind of seen on Facebook recently that a few people are, are sort of saying, oh, I've just done my worst, <laughs> just done my worst. It's really weird. <laughs> I find it really hard to actually talk with the headphones and I've got to say, I don't know if, I, <laughs> if it's because I have in-ear ones, but I feel like I'm talking in a cave constantly. So I'm definitely going to fuck up some words this time. This is going to be, you know, Marianne Maria needs to upgrade to headphones next time. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Um, some people were saying that they were they were had just done their first wedding blog submission and they were like really excited about it. And a lot of the time it was people who had been shooting weddings for for years and they just mm -hmm. had been like too apprehensive and too scared to kind of go for it. And we're going to uncover a few of those myths about that kind of stop people from submitting like that, you know, is your is my work good enough, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. We're going to address a lot yeah. of those things because, you know, if we can submit, then then yeah. a lot of people can. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The first, <laughs> the first, I, I remember the first like wedding blog I had featured. Well, it was actually the second one. I had like sent it into like love my dress, and I thought I was like she's totally gonna say no. Like there was just no way she's saying yes to this, and she said yes. And I was just like holy cow. <laughs> and so it was just like sometimes you can be really surprised about the things that they'll take. 
Yeah. Um, so there's, yeah, you never, you genuinely never know. Okay. So, so oh, just to clarify as well, um, there's two ways that you can kind of get yourself onto a wedding blog. Um, and the first one is like paid adverts. And we'll we'll address that a little bit later on in the podcast. Um, and but the second one, in a way, I maybe should have said the first one first, shouldn't I? And the second one second. <laughs> okay, just to just to confuse the fuck out of you, the sec the second one is is free features, and that's what we're going to talk about first. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about free features because I think that's the most relevant and probably the most confusing. And yeah, and if and if people uh, are new in the business, there, then you're probably going to try the free option before you try the paid paid option. Really, as we said, it well free features. What are they basically? They're like usually the section in a wedding blog where it says, you know, real weddings or yeah, it's yeah, it's you basically are submitting a real wedding to the blog saying this is a wedding I shot. I feel like it's a really good fit. Um, I would love for you to feature. And most most wedding blogs will do one or two posts a day of real weddings, and they're they're basically posting these weddings for prospective clients and prospective couples and couples that are planning their weddings to have inspiration. Mm. on because especially when you work in the wedding industry you kind of forget what life is like outside the wedding industry all of Mm. a sudden like you're overwhelmed with like i need i need dresses and i need shoes and i need tuxes and i found like suits and stuff really confusing because i didn't know anything about them and it can be it can be really overwhelming and you sometimes you just want ideas like you don't know what you want until you see it yeah yeah and then you see a wedding you're like wow that is exactly what i'm looking for Mm. And so these wedding blogs are a source of inspiration for people planning their wedding. And this is why it's like a really good thing to look into, because as well as being free, it's basically like everyone who's visiting the wedding blog is a potential client. It's exactly on market. There's no there's no people like, you know, on Facebook adverts, like sometimes you've got to filter through the people who aren't engaged or whatever, blah, 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 blah. It's like everyone who's visiting a wedding blog is probably planning a wedding, which is like nailed. Yeah. Exactly. And also those, those wedding features stay up for a really long time. So oh, yeah. if somebody, if somebody's Googling your wedding venue or Googling a particular dress or anything like that, those blogs rank really high on, on Google. So mm. higher than your own blog sometimes, right? In, in, in a lot of cases, higher than your own blogs, because the wedding blogs will have kind of like a higher ranking than you mm. most of the time. And so I have, I've generally been back to a lot of venues that I've had featured just because I had them featured on a wedding blog. Mm. So and it's kind of like a third party recommendation. Like it's almost a little bit, it's like a step removed, but it's still a really good recommendation. And also I find like the good thing about them is because a lot of the wedding blogs are kind of quite distinct in their style, they all, they all niche in their own way. In a way, if you have, say you have a bit more of an alternative style and you're going to submit to alternatively style wedding blogs, Again, it's like curating your your target market. Like everyone who's visiting that wedding blog is probably going to be more in line with your style, and you've kind of got a better chance of being seen basically by the by the right kind of couples that you want to be seen by. Right, and also I think the other the other layer of that is, even if a couple hasn't seen you on a particular wedding blog, when they come to your site and they've seen that you've been featured in all of these places, it kind of adds another layer of recommendation. So there's, there's kind of, you can see like a visual marked difference between being like featured in all of these places and someone who's never been featured anywhere. You just look a little bit more established. Yeah, sure. It's not necessarily the final nail in the coffin, but it helps. And so anything you can do to separate yourself from other photographers, and if that's being featured in loads of places, then it's worthwhile doing. Yeah, for sure. That little edge, I think is is definitely... It's a little edge, yeah. And so it might be kind of like, wow, you know, I love, let's say the, the bride's like, I love Rock and Roll Bride. Even if they didn't see your feature in Rock and Roll Bride, if they've seen on your website that you've been featured a bunch in Rock and Roll Bride, they're like, wow, that's a really great fit. Like, I, I love that blog too. And so it's just kind of another extra like, oh, cool. We're the same wavelength. Yeah, we're the same wavelength kind of thing. Mm. So it kind of, they don't necessarily have to see you on that site. Just seeing that association with the site can kind of help a little bit. It's not necessarily going to book you the wedding, but it can it can help. Mm, no, I totally agree. So maybe that's a good good place for us to start with kind of what are the common options out there. And, I, and I'm aware that we might have people who, who are listening outside of the UK, but I guess for the sake of simplicity, should we just target the UK? Well, I think if well, that's the market we know the best, mm. but we can kind of explain how we kind of got to those options. So I think in the UK, there's some of the, the, the bigger blogs out there. I would say in the, as far as the big UK blogs go, there's Rock and Roll Bride, Love My Dress, Whimsical Wonderland Weddings. That would be the third. Rock My Wedding? 
Rock My Wedding, definitely a big one. Mm. I should have listed that one as well. So those are the big four. <laughs> I know. It's sad because I actually, I've had an ad on there for so long <laughs> that I should have listed that number one. <laughs> I know. I was kind of giving you the stink eye through the small phone, but I, I mean, I think our screen is so small. I wasn't it. Like, I, I was know just... I'm forgetting one. <laughs> yeah. um, I was like, yeah. the, the big, is she going to say it? Is she going to say it? Um, did you mention Love My Dress? You did, right? Yeah. So Rock and Roll Bride, Love My Dress, Rock My Wedding, Whimsical Wonderland Weddings. Those I'd say are definitely the big four. And then yeah. I would also list things like Boho, Brides Up North. Those are all ones that I would say are definitely like the, the bigger blogs as far as readership goes in the yeah. UK. And then there's a bunch of other blogs along with them that are also really great. Yeah. So it's kind of starting to do your market research as far as wedding blogs that are in your area is kind of the good start. And all of those wedding blogs are actually really different. They had totally different brides yeah, and totally different weddings that they feature. So a wedding that's going to go up on Love My Dress is not necessarily going to be the same wedding that goes up on Rock My Wedding. Yeah, yeah, true. And I, I got to say, as well as searching for one that is relevant to your area, also going for ones that are like culture specific or like religion specific. So I actually get amazing return from Smashing the Glass, which is because okay. it's pretty much like the only Jewish wedding blog out there, I think, in the UK. Yeah. Kind of like any any Jewish couple who is planning their wedding. As soon as they start Googling, you know, Jewish wedding planning, that's, that's the number one hit. So because it's so niche... I, I get amazing return from there. Every time I get a wedding featured on there, I definitely get some bookings out of it. Yeah. Um, and same goes for like, um, there's another one that's called like, I think it's called Big Fat Indian Wedding. And that's not oh, okay. a UK based one. But again, it's, there's, there's stuff floating around. It probably has a large around. UK readership as well then. Because the UK general ones, I think are quite general. They do like civils and they do kind of predominantly English weddings, although they will do weddings of other cultures. But it is, it is mostly sort of your, your sort of standard english wedding yeah i think definitely kind of finding just start paying attention to them start following them on instagram or start following start following them on facebook and then when you start following a bunch of wedding blogs you start getting a really good idea of that wedding blog's general aesthetic so it's almost like i almost kind of like thinking of it as clothing shopping mm. like as someone who who shops for clothes i will shop in a lot of different stores but there will be that one store that I love every single thing about that store. What's that store? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, what, that's, a, that's a really good analogy, actually. <laughs> what's, what's that store for you? Uh, you know, it's actually, yeah. It's hard to, it depends on the day, to be honest. <laughs> you've, just, you've just given your own brilliant that analogy. One store. Well, it used, to be, it used to be Zara. I used to be, like, all about Zara. But I've kind yeah. of moved away from Zara a little bit. Um, there's a couple of online shops that I would literally own everything from that shop. And oh, mod cloth. That's it. What? So there's a, oh, I don't a, know that what, one. Have you not, it's an American. It's an American online shop. So the shop's called Mod Cloth, and I would own everything from Mod Cloth, everything from the shoes to the purses to the dress. I would own every single thing from Mod Cloth. Mm. So, but I still that doesn't mean I don't shop in other stores and I don't find like clothes in other stores. Yeah. But I almost think it's kind of the same in like wedding blogs and branding, whereas like. Those stores have very specific, like they know who their client is yeah. and they're designing for that client. Yeah. And then people from other shops, you might kind of pop, like, let's say you're someone who shops at Topshop. You might still buy something from Zara, but you're you generally the first place you go to in the, in the shopping mall is going to be this other place. No, yeah, so definitely. So if you think of wedding blogs being kind of the same way, knowing that the type of person who reads this blog has this general aesthetic. And they might still read other blogs, but they're going to find the most inspiration from this particular one. Mm. So what's your store? If you had to shop at only one um, shop. I See, it's a hard question. Yeah, it's because I've got like a few, I'd probably say. So, but, they all, but if you look at them, like from a branding perspective, they all still kind of feel a little bit different. You can tell that their target client is a little bit different for each one. To be honest, what I'm thinking is like the shop that I am actually shopping at a lot recently is not the same as the one I want to see myself in simply because I think my ideal shop is like too expensive for me to buy there regularly. So I want to, <laughs> I want to say like Cos probably epitomizes my style because it's all yeah. like blocky and, and neutral colors. But then realistically, it's probably Adidas because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like constantly in my active wear. <laughs> that active wear like video song that's taking the piss of women doing everything in their active wear like I am that person for real so uh yeah <laughs> but anyway <laughs> yeah if you think if you think of wedding blogs kind of being the same way 
that looking at them from a general aesthetic idea, then you can yeah. kind of get an idea. And then once you really start following them, as soon as you see a wedding, you're like, that is a love my dress wedding. Like as soon yeah. as you're shooting a wedding, you can tell. Yeah, yeah. You know, wedding you start to really, learn. Yeah, you start to learn and it becomes really easy to kind of start identifying really good fits. And if and if you're wondering how you find which wedding blogs are, are good for your target market, my one tip is to basically just like go into Google and almost pretend you're your ideal couple and literally type in search terms that you think your ideal couple will be using or that you feel that like your your keyword branding, your, what's your brand, you know, your keyword branding, your branding keywords. So the words that yeah. you yourself would use that you think you want your couples to find you under. Like, so for me, for example, I want like fun couples. So I probably maybe search for like fun wedding plan, fun wedding ideas, fun wedding planning and see what comes up. And you might find it yeah. may not be the first few links. It may link to something else completely random, but somewhere yeah. in there you'll probably start to see, uh, you'll probably stumble across a wedding blog pretty soon. First few pages. Or even just surfing around Pinterest for a bit, you kind of find a lot of wedding blogs pin a lot onto Pinterest and you start finding wedding blog ideas. There is another website called Two Bright Lights. That's it. Two Bright Lights is a really good way to find wedding blogs that maybe you haven't heard of before. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's American thing though, right? I think so. But I but it has a lot of international suppliers. I personally have not used it, but I know that is a way to find wedding blogs that maybe that you had never heard of before. Just to kind of do a little bit of market research. Yeah. Isn't that the one where you submit your work to the to the blog and then the bloggers come and f- approach it off you? Is that the way? That you submit it into a wider, like an open platform? I think <laughs> for doing a blog post about blogging, we sure don't know a lot about it. <laughs> no, we do. We do know a lot about it. It's just not, it's not something I've used. So I think you, yeah, I think you can kind of, like it has like indexes and key- keywords and stuff like that and you can kind of do it that way. But being as I haven't used it, I can't say specifically how you don't want to. You don't want to get, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've always had, like, I've, because I started following wedding blogs really early, I always had a really clear idea of which wedding blogs I quite like to be featured on. Mm. And I've always just aimed for those. Yeah. And I haven't really done as much research onto wedding blogs from other countries and stuff like that. Mostly just because it wasn't my target market. But if you are wanting to shoot in other places, getting featured on a wedding blog in another country is really a really great way to do it. And one thing I'll say about using sort of a platform like Two Bright Lights where you can, I guess, get access to more wedding blogs that you don't normally submit to. With I would kind of feel like almost every wedding you can get featured on somewhere. The question is whether or not, you know, you may not get it on your favourite blog or you may not get it on the, one of the bigger ones. But if you really want to put a wedding out somewhere, there is always going to be like a smaller wedding blog somewhere that will be happy to take it. Yeah. And that's one rule I kind of apply to submitting to blogs. If the couple are up for being featured, I will get it somewhere. Like... Yeah. Because it's all free backlinks. Yeah, it's all free backlinks. And also, if it's a really, really great wedding, I mean, they're all really great, let's be honest. But let's say it's a really detail-specific wedding that has a really big cross-platform appeal, you can actually get it featured into multiple wedding blogs. Don't submit them at the same time, but you submit that to your first choice wedding blog, and then when whenever have it featured after a few months, depending on those blogs' policies, you can then submit it again to another wedding blog and get it featured. My my record is I've had a wedding featured in two wedding magazines and three blogs. Oh, wow. Wedding. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was all, but just because it was, a really, it was a really unique wedding. It had a lot of really unique details. And in those particular cases, I didn't really have to hunt that much. I just had people asking for it. And I just mm. told them, well, it's already going onto this blog. If you wait, their policy is this. If you wait, you can have it. And they were more than happy to wait. And so it kind of then went on. And so sometimes they're they're happy to refeature. You can kind of start making a list and then kind of put things in order. And sometimes if you're not sure about the order, just look at their readership numbers. Mm. Look how many look how many Instagram followers or Twitter followers. Those those numbers might not be 100% accurate, but it kind of gives you a general idea of the of the readership of that blog. Mm. And you can I don't I don't know, can you can you see post engagement? I guess um, you can. You if you let's say let's say somebody posts a wedding on Facebook looking at how many likes and comments that wedding gets on that, let's say that blog's Facebook page Mm. to see kind of actually the engagement of people that are talking about these weddings might give you kind of a good idea of that's actually a really good place to have things featured because the bloggers engaging with the readers and there's people are are commenting on the blog posts and stuff like that. Having a a good idea of as far as that type of engagement might give you an idea of which blogs are worthwhile to kind of put on your radar. I'd also say that um, I've noticed recently, like sometimes some of the blogs, they change, they or they vary in the way they actually promote your wedding. So I would also maybe look out for the blogs that do a lot of promotion. Because say, for example, yeah. it may be more useful to be on a smaller blog that will put your wedding out to all, you know, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, and put a lot of work and effort into it. 
and I've got some wedding blogs that will repeatedly um, promote past weddings and things like that. Yeah. And to me, that's more useful than a wedding blog that is massive, but is like churning out too many weddings almost because there's not enough and not giving each wedding enough airtime. That's maybe yeah. not as effective as you might think it is. I would also maybe sort of rate the blog's usefulness based on that. Yeah, I would actually, I'll give a shout out to Lou at Whimsical Wonderland Weddings. Yeah who is fantastic and she's really great at doing that because a lot of times like she'll feature a wedding of mine and she'll she'll cross she'll put yeah. it in different platforms and then every now and again a few months later she might feature she might do a blog post on hairstyles or something like that and then she'll pull one of those images back from that blog post and then feature it again that's exactly who i was thinking of yeah and that and that for as someone who is submitting to blogs is awesome to see i'm more likely to send stuff to her just because of that I've been with Lou quite a lot as well. Yeah, she was who I had in mind actually when I was when I was describing that. She does really good um, shout out on all the platforms, and she gives like a really good description, and and I can tell she puts a lot of effort into it. So she does, yeah. And so even though that might not be like the top wedding blog in the world, if I post a wedding and she wants to feature it, then she's she's pretty much my first choice just because of that. Which is kind of pulls us into the next section as far as like how to get featured onto blogs. So we talked about which blogs to look out for and to keep on your radar. Shall we say like what blogs are actually looking for? You know, like you mentioned the detailed yeah. shots earlier. And sometimes people aren't really sure like when they submit to a wedding, why is it getting rejected? And it might be because they're just not sending in the right kind of images or... Yeah. So we can do that real quick, right? Yeah, we can We can definitely talk about that because a lot of times just because you did a really great job of photographing that wedding doesn't mean that it's a suitable photograph for a blog feature. Mm. Those two things are completely different. Yeah. Blogs want to see a lot of details because people are looking for inspiration. You might have amazing guest candidates, but chances are the blog yeah. doesn't really want to see those images just because a photo of your Uncle Bob drinking lemonade. <laughs> unless unless the lemonade is particularly interesting. Yeah, a, with a, a nice straw. In, with a nice straw. The, a stranger on the internet might not find that interesting. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if, exactly. they're looking, if you're looking for details like for your wedding, you're kind of wanting to see like, oh, this is how they did the table plan. Oh, that's a really unique idea. Or, or this is how they set up the venue. And that's a really unique idea. That's kind of what people are looking at wedding blogs for. They're yeah. not looking at wedding blogs for candidates of guests. And so if you're submitting, unless it's a particularly interesting shot, and, and actually some wedding blogs do really like having documentary photography mixed in but you get that feeling from looking at that wedding blog for sure and i think like as as a documentary wedding photographer myself it's really funny to see if you look at my website which you, you should all go do anyway <laughs> if you can look at my website what's, but then what's you, the website link? I, don't, I don't know what it is let do me link it your website? yeah i'll just put it on a text overlay oh no yeah i can do that um but anyway if you look at my website and you look at some of my wedding blog features the content is completely different basically like when i submit to wedding blogs it's all the details couple shots group shots almost like the, the stock shots, I would say. So it's if even if you think to yourself, oh, like I shoot in a certain style. I mean, I'm going on the assumption that you are maybe probably taking those detailed shots for the client anyway. It doesn't matter if the wedding blog doesn't seem to feature your kind of heavy documentary style. You can still get submissions and features out of it. There are also um, a lot of the wedding blogs are actually looking for really good quality photography as well. Mm. So they want they want everything to look pretty and look really just stylish and they're looking for consistency and then they're also looking for depending on the wedding blog some wedding blogs really don't like heavy post-processed image so some some wedding blogs are very actually particular about the type of post-processing that they take so if you have a really heavy editing style they might turn you down based on that basically when you're picking out images to send to them having it being very kind of very detail heavy, very consistent, very well edited, I think are all things that I actually heard somebody mention recently about what vertical photos that they actually prefer vertical photos over horizontal photos. Mm -hmm. But I haven't done enough research to verify that because I, I almost submit all horizontal photos. Yeah, and same. I, haven't had, <laughs> I haven't had much issue with that. But that might be that might actually be quite a, a valid point. I've never heard of that. Like, maybe that's probably a blog I haven't been featured on there. Because <laughs> I have virtually no vertical images. <laughs> yeah. I think also um, I could see, I can definitely see magazines preferring them because of the way that oh, the layouts work. Yeah, of course. Um, so it might be the same particular case with blogs, although I'm not 100% sure. So don't quote me on that. Um, but definitely when you feel, let's say you've, you shot a wedding, you're like, this is a really great fit for Love My Dress. Mm -hmm. Like, you just see it when you're shooting the wedding. You're like, this is a great fit for this blog. Go back through. And then look at Love My Dress website 
on their website, they will have somewhere a submissions page mm. that tells you exactly what they want. And yeah. every wedding blog is going to be slightly different. Some prefer a certain number of photos. Some, photo- some wedding blogs want to see hundreds of photos. Some only want to see 10. Some... When they see the 10, they're often saying that as kind of like a pre-acceptance stage. They want yeah. to see like a brief summary before they say yes or no to it. And then you might have to submit a further 40 or 50 or whatever afterwards. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But they're going to say very clearly on their website what they want. And it's mm. going to be slightly different for every single blog. But you want to follow that to a T because... That's how that blogger has set up their workflow. That's how they do things. Everyone has a slightly different workflow. You're just going to serve to piss them off if you don't do it that way. (sighs) Oh, yeah, yeah. So Because they're, you know, uh, if they don't say yes to you, they're just going to go down to the next email and just say yes to the next person. Yeah. So they're looking for someone who is actually following what they're asking for. And also having things like, I've heard this mentioned multiple times from many bloggers, write the blogger to the correct name. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's not really that hard to figure out the blogger's name. They want to know that that blog, that submission is being tailored for them. And yeah. if you're referring to another person's name, even when I, I get a wedding inquiry and some they refer to me as another name, did you even look at my website? Like, you're not looking for me. You're just looking for any photographer. Yeah. And so it's the same thing with wedding blogs. They want to know that you're talking to them. Yeah. And then send them a little, like, one paragraph, two paragraph description of the wedding Give them some text and some details. If there's a really interesting story behind the wedding, bloggers really love having a background story and like a really sweet yeah. story about how that wedding was. And so even if it's a wedding with a handful of people explaining that it was just a really small and intimate wedding and they have this and they have that and just kind of giving it a bit a bit more of a story and a context behind it. Yeah. Because you know the story and you kind of take that for granted, but this blogger has no idea yeah. anything about it. Pick your strongest images that really show off the detail and the quality of that wedding yeah. just to give that kind of to give it the most efficient the most most chance yeah the fighting the biggest fighting chance biggest likelihood the biggest likelihood and so but the number one thing the, if you take anything from this is to just look at the blogger submission page <laughs> That's a, yeah. Because that's the tip of this podcast. Read read the blogger submissions page. They would they would love us for telling you that. <laughs> yeah. If you can't if you can't find it, just Google it. Just be yeah. like, love my dress submissions, and yeah. it's going to be number one. It's going to and, and follow what they want to a T. Yeah. And they will be very very happy. Just as a sidebar, like I recently submitted, I had like a couple of weddings backed up from uh, like um, spring season or whatever, and I sent a few in one email to Cat. Uh, who runs Rock and Roll Bride. And I said to her, oh, I hope this is okay that I'm, I'm sending a few in a row. And she was like, do it. The more efficient, the better. And when I send some descriptions to her, because I know she's like a crazy busy blogger. Um, crazy, bi- what did I just say? Did I say crazy bigger blogger? Crazy, I said crazy busy blogger. Don't, yeah. call her, don't call her by the wrong name. <laughs> she's a crazy busy you know what blogger. I, I will say, I will say for Kat, is she is the most efficient yeah. person as far as answering She treasures emails. efficiency. <laughs> it's yeah. brilliant. So you can, for her, you can kind of, send you can be very to the point i think i literally sometimes send her an email just being like this dress this this venue these balloons blah 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 blah, cake this way and just like hit it really hard like i don't fuck about with like too much <laughs> yeah too much words because i know she just almost wants like a bullet point like to just see yeah. exactly what's in there so I think she's, there's like, well. she's one of the ones that just wants to see a handful of images and then she wants to see the full set yeah yeah she's if very tall correctly yeah, 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 she's definitely a, a ten images first, I think, or twenty to twenty, I think it is. And and the thing is too is like I've sent I've sent several weddings to Cat, and had a lot of them turned down. That is perfectly fine. Like, oh yeah, I have. So what I'll do is I'll send I'll send her an email being like, I think this wedding's a really good fit. This is why. This is the story behind the wedding. And then at the very bottom, I'll put if I don't hear back from you in a certain amount of time. I think I actually got this from a Jasmine Stark Creative Live. But if I don't hear back from you at a particular amount of time, and I'll say the time. I will assume that you've passed on the submission and I will send the submission elsewhere. That is never a problem with Kat because I'll hear back with her in a very reasonable prime. Mm. But some bloggers aren't as great in emails. And so having saying a, a timeline on it, being like, if I don't hear from back from you in two weeks, I'll assume that you're not featuring this and I'm going to actually submit elsewhere. Because that kind of gives you a point to just say, I'm moving on. So the first, the first wedding that I had featured... I'm not going to st- state the blog because I would think that would be wrong. I sent the I sent the wedding feature in. I didn't hear anything. I didn't get any email, nothing. And then all of a sudden one day I was checking my analytics and I got the wedding had been featured. 
Oh. So they didn't even tell me that it was confirmed. And oh, okay. I was just like, holy cow, like there's this feature, which is awesome. Because it was the first wedding I'd ever sent in. And I was really excited to see it. But I was just like, I had no, I actually missed it by a day. Because I had no idea that it went up. And so some some bloggers, I assume by now they've probably corrected that problem. But <laughs> some some bloggers are better at emailing than others. Because sometimes yeah. they have full-time jobs and they have lives and they get yeah. a lot of emails. It's, a, it's Sometimes it's a passion project. It's not a full-time job necessarily. Exactly. Yeah. Just putting a timeline on it that gives you kind of the ability to move on. I think it helps all parties. It does, yeah. So yeah, just pop a, like, a little thing on the bottom. If I don't hear back from you in 10 days... I'll assume that you've passed around. That's kind of a nice little disclaimer thing yeah. to have. It's also a nice little disclaimer to say this wedding is not being featured for consider consideration by any other blogs or magazines. Because a lot of these wedding blogs want exclusivity. I cannot say words. That's what I'm learning from this project is I cannot say any words. A lot of <laughs> wedding blogs want to know that you are the they are the only person that has that wedding. Yeah. And it's not being featured anywhere else. So kind of putting putting that as also a disclaimer as well. Yeah. Is a really good idea. Don't send to multiple wedding blogs at the same time. Yeah. Don't send it out to all of the wedding blogs. Because if you get because... several acceptances, you're then going to have to turn around and and be like, oh, no, sorry, someone else took it yeah. first. And it's a bit that's of a That's a bad way to start a relationship with a wedding blogger. Just pick one that's a really good fit. Move on to the next one that's a really good fit after they accept or yeah. reject. And rejection, like just picking on what you were saying before, rejection is super common. And this is a thing that I've noticed online on Facebook that... People are sort of saying stuff like, oh, they're really upset, like they never get accepted or they've like struggled and they wanted to give up. It's it's never really about you. It's usually just stuff like they featured something recently that has the same color um, bridesmaids dresses or they featured yeah. something that has the same theme or whatever. Yeah. So my, my big message from here, as well as read the submission page, is um, don't give up. Like I said, you can get yeah. pretty much almost any wedding anywhere, as long as you're not like... This is going on the assumption that you're not like crazy bad at photography and everything's all over the shop. <laughs> if you're like a, a decent photographer, like it, that's that's not going to be the thing that's going to factor in too heavily. Like if it's if it's got the right details that the bloggers after something more unique is obviously better. But you know, obviously in wedding blogs, you'll still see a lot of things like bunting. There was obviously like the year of bunting. <laughs> um, it was it will still go somewhere, especially if you just whittle down from the bigger blogs and then just work your way down one by one. And you may actually be surprised. Like, if you're on the fence, like, I'm not sure they're going to take this. You may actually genuinely be surprised. Yeah. I was going to say, that's happened to me in reverse as well, where I've been so sure that this wedding is, like, amazing, uh, details-wise. And I've just had it rejected by who I thought would be the really obvious choice for it. And I was like, what? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's fucking amazing. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, what's happened now is I've been featured on Lou's site, Whimsical Wonderland Wedding, so many times that she actually will, e if, I, if I blog a wedding, she'll actually email me. Mm. And ask, hey, can I feature this wedding? And so that's kind of that over time you build a relationship with a blog supplier or a blogger. And you kind of, they'll, they'll, they'll let you know what they want. Some bloggers, that's particularly the case. And Lou's emailed me for weddings that I didn't even consider submitting. Just because I didn't think they were particularly detail heavy. Mm. But she really liked the photography. She liked the whole feel. And so sometimes you'll be surprised the weddings that you actually get featured. Just because maybe the blogger just really is drawn to the whole atmosphere of the day. Yeah. And they're a blog that's a little bit more oriented on photography than details. You don't know until you try mm. and it's worthwhile just trying. It's a good exercise in your business and marketing to just do it. Yeah. Do stuff. Do, do stuff, stuff all the time. Do the thing. Do all the things. <laughs> yeah. It's always, um, it's always kind of funny when someone's like, so what do you do during the week? So if you shoot a wedding on a Saturday, you must have the rest of the week free. And you're just like, no, 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 like, no, no, no. I'm doing all the things. I'm so busy with all the things. Yeah. <laughs> so once you once you get a wedding accepted onto a blog, yay. Um, yay! What tends to happen afterwards, and again, this is something that varies between the different bloggers, but what tends to happen afterwards is you, the photographer, will tend to sort the, the photos out. And they'll tell you yeah. like a number that you need and they'll tell you sizing dimensions and give you those cool guidelines. And you will either Dropbox them over, we transfer them over, online gallery them over to the blogger. And then the couple will, they'll usually send you a questionnaire to forward on to the couple. Sometimes they send it directly to the couple if you've given their details. And you basically then have to play the waiting game for the couple to return the questionnaire. And I think that's one of the other, that's like the sort of the next big hurdle of, of submitting to wedding blogs is getting the couple to return the questionnaire. And what I would kind of say is there's definitely been frustrating times when I've had like a gorgeous wedding. It's got accepted onto this blog. I know it's going to be great. The couple are really keen to get featured beforehand. And then, you know what? Like, just life and shit just happens. Um, yeah. Some, sometimes everything they've had... Happened, they have yeah, life. Or everything they, they've had to put off before the wedding. 
they say, oh, we'll just do that after the wedding. And then it all catches up to them after the wedding. And you have to kind of accept that that's just part of, that's just part of what will happen. You can't make anyone fill out this questionnaire. You can't, you can't fake it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't pretend to be a couple. Sometimes you have to just let it go. In yeah. The I've actually had things. some, I've actually had some bloggers where I've told them that I'm not sure that the couple would have the time to fill out the questionnaire. Yeah. And they've actually been fine if I write a description, but being very clear with the bloggers beforehand, being like, they're not they're probably not gonna felt they've they've given permission to her be featured in a wedding blog but they're not necessarily going to having like supplier details in advance is really helpful for that mm. so knowing things like um dress manufacturer and shoes and like a lot of the caterers and like knowing all of that stuff will help you if you want to do submit it afterwards without the couple's input the couples do need to give you permission. I think that's fair. Yeah. Oh, like you don't want to just, yeah, you definitely have to get the couple's permission, but I've had some couples that are just from a time standpoint, they just don't want to fill out the questionnaire. And that's usually what it is. That's usually what it is. Yeah. And there's a lot of those details that you can actually, there's a lot of those supplier information that you can actually pick up on the wedding day. So things Mm -hmm. like the dress manufacturer, when you're doing the the hanging up the dress shot, taking a a photo of the label of the dress, just so Mm -hmm. you know who the manufacturer is kind of paying attention to, cards and grabbing people's business cards and stuff like that yeah or just having the it's just good practice to do and then when you send out supplier images you can do out the same thing in the same swoop and and suppliers really like it when you get weddings featured on a blog suppliers love it oh yeah yeah i did a wedding recently actually with someone called carrie and (laughs) and, she sounds terrible (laughs) and uh it turns out that the the venue um decorators already knew who i was and i was like oh okay cool and they'd actually said to the couple oh yeah yeah, we worked with her before and that was really nice for the couple they mentioned it to me on the day um and it just kind of affirmed for the couple yeah you know we we've got like a good solid photographer and stuff so it's good to build those relationships with other suppliers yeah i've Um, actually run into the same florist multiple times and i didn't really realize it until like like the third wedding i was just like wait a second we know each other i've seen you many times because like those weddings are really the florist is fantastic and i like we've always gotten i probably worked with her five or six times now and so i walk into the venue I'm like oh hey how you doing and so but they really love it when they you get weddings featured because it's marketing for them oh, and so yeah. it kind of helps build up that relationship yeah Another thing you can do as well is, is making sure that you ask these questions to the couple in the pre-wedding questionnaire. You're way more likely to actually get, get it out of them whilst they're in the throes of planning versus yeah. after when they're sort of happy when the honeymoon and done. Yeah. I do put on, I actually put on my pre-wedding questionnaire, are you interested in being featured in a magazine or a blog? Oh, that's um, good I actually have that. I actually have that question on my questionnaire. I will have some people say, nope, not interested at all. Mm. And then I'll have some people say like 100% absolutely. And that gives me a really good idea of... If they say on their pre-wedding questionnaire that they are 100% interested in being featured in a blog, then I will make sure to spend the extra three or four minutes doing a couple of extra detail shots. Mm, Yeah. Just because I know that that's probably going to be, that's important to the couple and that that's going to need to be as part of the wedding coverage. Mm. If they're not as interested and there's not a lot of details, then I'm not necessarily going to spend that extra time doing those detail shots. I'll still give them detail shots, but they won't necessarily have the blog stylized detail shots that blogs particularly like to see. So yeah, it's good to have on the questionnaire. Whew. I am a very warm person yeah. <laughs> at the moment. I this had to like... shut my window to not have any extra sound. And Same. I am... It is very warm. <laughs> I look forward to December when I can cuddle up next to the heater and then pretend like it's this warm. But then we'll have like podcasting with like slightly chattering teeth and like uh... Quentin meowling. For like, oh. hug me, hug me. <laughs> He's actually very cuddly in the winter because he wants all your body heat, which is really cute. Aww. Right now, he doesn't want anything to do with you. He's, He's like, like, don't, don't touch, touch me, me. human. <laughs> too warm. Um, right, what's the, what's the next thing that we can talk about wedding features? Um, right. So you've, you've submitted it, um, you've had it accepted, and you've, d- you've done the questionnaire and you've given it to them. And then after that, I guess what I would just caution with people is there is usually quite a long waiting time. I think the waiting times are getting longer and longer and... I think it's quite good practice to actually just notify your couple of that. For the couple, if you take the questionnaire of them and you ask them for all this stuff and they spend a lot of time filling out the questionnaire, it's I find it it's, it's really rude and off-putting for them if you don't then let them know, okay, you know, the the wedding blog has seen, has seen the questionnaire and this is the rough time it's going to get featured. Because for some of the wedding blogs, it can be up to like six months. Mm. Um, and some of them even longer than that. And then And also then when it actually goes live and it's published, do make sure that you share it back with your couple at that time as well. Because... The chances are they will then share that wedding blog to their friends on Facebook being like, oh, look, I got featured on this wedding blog. And that for you is just common sense marketing. And so but it is. And even when you're doing the submission process and talking to your couples about it, 
telling them that we're, we may have to submit to several different blogs. There's going to be a waiting game. Just giving them kind of a, a general heads up as yeah. far as the time. People just like to know because they sometimes they just might expect it to see it the next week and that's just not going to happen. It's it's kind of a, it's a very long game. So as far as you submit, you wait six months, you submit, you wait six months. So having every, you know, every now and again, just going through the submission process because the turnaround is so long. Yeah. That you're kind of. When you're putting stuff up now, you're let's so let's say I want to submit a wedding now. I might not see that until December. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, like let's say you're aiming for January, February features. That's the best time to be featured on a wedding blog. Yeah, because that's when people are planning their weddings. Exactly, people are planning their weddings in the winter. So thinking about wedding blog submissions January, February to be featured on their websites is really kind of that's the goal and that's the aim, and that yeah. you have to think about months in advance. Yeah. To be honest, because I, I shoot so many weddings, like I find that I try and just do it rolling. So as soon yeah. as I, if I have a good one and I know the couple are likely to want to be featured and I put it out, as soon as I, you know, send it to the couple and I've put out their blog post on my own website, um, I will usually try and get it done at that time just to keep it rolling. Because like you say, there's such a big gap in a way I almost want a constant flow of advertising. Don't yeah. I? So I, I will say after all this conversation and me talking about wedding blogs, I've been, I've been featured in a lot of wedding blogs. I, in the last couple of years, have cooled down on my wedding blog submissions. Mostly it's a time thing. I, I, it's, I know. Like, I, I, have, I even have it on, like, on my main page of my website, featured in all these places. In the last couple of years, I've really slowed down on my submission process for no other reason besides time. Mm. And I've just had so many issues with people sending back questionnaires and stuff like that. I know I'm, like, I'm not practicing what I preach, but it hasn't necessarily had a major impact in my bookings mostly because i think of where i get my weddings has changed over time so it's one of those things where i book a lot from other different places it's nice to do but it's not necessarily going to be the end all and be all of where you get your work from so i that's kind of part of the reason why i've quieted down on it i should it's on my to-do list like i have like a whole list of weddings that i need to send out and i just haven't done you know what's really funny is I've, I've gone the opposite direction. Oh, really? So I on purposely like tried to do an experiment before I was doing like a bit of paid advertising on blogs, but also free wedding features. And I wanted to find out specifically like how much of it was coming through free features. So mm-hmm. I on purposely cut pretty much all my paid wedding blog advertising apart from um, what my weddings love last list. And I focused on just trying to get as many submissions out there as possible. And mm. the way I see it is it's a bit like being a minesweeper where you just kind of leave mines laying around the whole field and then at some point you know that someone's going to stumble across it and that's where... So I kind of know that it's it's hard to judge right now because it's like not an immediate f- feedback, especially with the waiting time. But, you know, somewhere six months down the line, like you say, the blog features are up for ages. Um, someone's probably going to s- search for that venue and that's when I'll that's when I'll see the return. So I have I have found like a slight drop compared to losing some of the paid adverts because obviously paid adverts are always on the front page, but I'm st- I'm definitely still seeing stuff coming in. And it's interesting yeah. to know that when someone a couple puts into my inquiry box, you know, oh I found you on my wedding, it's good to know that it's from a feature rather than from a uh, whatever. Paid advertisement. Yeah. I, I, I particularly like the paid advertisements, mostly because I am always on the front page or I am always in their vendor directory. And I quite like vendor directories because a lot of times when someone's actively looking to buy, they will go through those vendor directories. Yeah. And so it costs me a bit more money to do the paid advertising, but I gain a little bit back in time. And because I'm not having to do the whole submission thing. Yeah. And it's nice to just kind of just sit on the front page. And I think you will see more immediate return as well. And so I, I do, I do really like the paid advertising and I just think it's mostly just been a time thing and it's on my to-do list and I definitely think it's worthwhile, but I have, I have cooled down. I actually have no weddings sitting in a submission box at the moment. I haven't submitted, I don't have anything in the wedding queue. Oh. So mostly it's just, it just hasn't been necessary the mm. last couple of years, but I'd still like to do it. It's still really good exercise. It's still really great for the clients. And it's really great. It's just as far as marketing goes. <sighs> I just wanted to say that disclaimer I don't practice what I preach. <laughs> You've like debunked the myth, the carry myth. <laughs> well, I've, I, been, I've been featured in I lots do. of places. Yeah. I, I mean, like, <laughs> the last wedding I, sh- I shot was, was found me on Rock and Roll Bride. So yeah. I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still reaping the rewards. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely have. The thing is, though, I still reap the rewards from being featured in places. Because a lot of times, like if, if someone's Googling a venue and it's a place that I've submitted before. So I'm well aware that I'm in the wrong I just need to correct that. <laughs> okay, so you know it works. You just you just. Not I know giving it works. 
<laughs> I do. I do give a fig. I do. It's just. It's just a time thing. Yeah. And no, fair enough. I definitely think I need to put it on my to-do list. Paid adverts are kind of a good way, I guess, of being time efficient, but still appealing to the same market. It's true. Exactly. Yeah. It's time. It's more time efficient. It appeals to the same market and it doesn't necessarily have to bother your client afterwards with a, a wedding questionnaire. Yeah. So I do find I'm a big fan of the paid adverts, but from a money standpoint, it's <laughs> you're less of a fan. Of- <laughs> I much rather keep my money and then still be on the front page. Which is probably where the blog features are actually much better, and I just probably spend too much money. So <laughs> um, we can't really talk about like specific numbers and stuff for paid adverts with wedding blogs because they are all so different. But what we can say is that well, what can we say? <laughs> well, I think like going back to that whole clothing store description. If you match your general aesthetic on your website and your branding, and having a really strong think about that, having that website and branding then reflect a similar clientele as that wedding blog, you're going to find a really good fit. Oh, yeah. So if you are a really, really traditional wedding photographer who shoots on the more traditional side, advertising on Rock and Roll Bride is not a good fit. Yeah. Because Rock and Roll Bride is targeted towards alternative weddings and things that are a bit quirky and a bit different. And Whereas if you're an alternative wedding photographer, advertising on Rock and Roll Bride is a really good fit. Yeah. And it's also kind of like, let's say you like to do stuff that's really on trend and really stylish. Rock My Wedding's a really great fit for that because they like to do the things that are a little bit more on trend and a bit more stylish. Mm. Having things that have a little bit of a vintage inspiration, but still really stylish. Love My Dress. And a fantastic fit for that. And then Lou's blog really likes to focus on handmade details, really interesting stories, really interesting. Well, I should, when I say lose blog, I mean whimsical Wonderland weddings. <laughs> Referring to bloggers by first names. She likes, she likes really beautiful weddings that have handmade details and that just have a really great feel. So she likes a more cross section approach to it. Yeah. But she yeah. wants, she wants the whole feel of the wedding to be particularly yeah. there. And weddings like Boho, Boho loves like a little bit more of a bohemian type of feel, I guess, but she still has a bit more of a cross sectional approach. <laughs> boho bohemian but she still has a little bit more of a she's not so strict that she's not going to take things that aren't on a cross-sectional approach yeah um so having let's say like your style is very bohemian and the things that you feature in, on your website are very bohemian and your branding's very bohemian things like getting a, a paid advert on boho weddings is a really good fit and you have to really think about that like when you're looking through wedding blogs and you're designing your branding which mm. wedding blog really speaks to you from a design standpoint yeah then can influence how you brand and then where you target your marketing so it's a very it is a it is a very long game but it is worth playing and if you if you don't have that i guess i mean a way of summarizing would be paid advert think about it and if you don't think about it it's basically the equivalent of throwing cash onto a barbecue. Yeah. So like, it's worth it's worth making that conscious thought of what's my target market? Is my target market the same as this blogger's target market? Don't just go crazy and put yourself on every single blog everywhere just because. Yeah, exactly. Because it's just going to be a waste of money. And definitely con- making those considerations when you're doing a- when you're submitting, it's going to have the same reward system. Anyways, I have things to do, and I'm sure you have things to do too. So okay. I realized I didn't play our jingle in the beginning. I'm gonna have to go back and edit oh, that in. Oh, you're gonna have to pop that in. That's I'm that's okay. Ahead. It gives you that chance to have that more more of your skills, your editing audio skills <laughs> that you love I so see. much. Oh um, God! Why am we... I learning a new skill in the middle of wedding season? I have no idea. Sure, so, sure. How would we how would we summarize? How would we wrap it up? I guess in summary, reading the submission pages, really identifying styles and blogs, matching the styles and blogs with your blogs. And do all the things blog 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 and, blog. and do a good job shooting the wedding like yeah that. <laughs> don't fuck up <laughs> don't. no this job's not complicated at all it's really easy <laughs> yeah all those things whilst balancing like a, a plate on your nose and on roller skates and <laughs> yeah no. it does come it does come a little bit easier with time yeah yeah you get used to it so. But don't be afraid to do it. I think everyone out there who's kind of apprehensive about submitting to blogs, just go for it. Like, don't be afraid. There's nothing to be scared of. None of them bite. Apart from maybe that one, that one blogger. That, apart from that one. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going to play our jingle to play us out. Ooh.